Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I'm going to put on my new lantern-eyed space alien mask. For inspiration, I used the head of a lantern fish, a little tiny fish that are found evidently by millions and billions down in the really deep ocean and they really do have lighted eyes. What do you think, guys? This was, <laughs> this was so much fun to make. I know it's totally pointless. Absolutely nobody is going to want to make one of these. But I'm going to show you how I did it anyway because <laughs> I just had so much fun with it. Now the reason that I used a fish for my model this time is because I've already made two masks based on bugs. <laughs> so, um, you know, we needed something different. You probably saw my cicada mask and my uh, murder hornet mask lot of fun to make. I mean, they're just so weird. This guy was actually not as hard because um, there's no antennas, there's no legs. So this, this was actually an awful lot easier and making those eyeballs. I mean, is that cool or what? Would it be fun to walk around on Halloween <laughs> wearing this thing? <laughs> Let me show you how I made this thing. I put a plastic bag over the mannequin's head just so that the, the clay wouldn't get all over it. And then I started adding the WED clay. Now, oh, I get a lot of questions about this clay every time I use it. So just real fast, it's, um, it's a wet modeling clay. It's, it's just like pottery clay, mud basically, except that it has a few extra things added to make it really smooth. And you can't fire it in a kiln and you can't use it really for the final sculpture. It, it just dries out and cracks like, like normal clay does. It's, it's basically, it's just modeling clay. But it's a lot more fun for me to use. I really like getting my hands in it and I just prefer it over oil-based clays. It's just a personal thing. Now in this case, I'm gonna use the clay shapes as a positive mold and I'm gonna make a paper mache casting over it. And then I'll add a very paper thin layer of my paper mache clay over the paper strips and paste and that'll make a nice strong mask. I actually tried to make my fish head alien um, Definitely needs a better name than that, but um, I, I tried making it with a form that was made out of a plastic shopping bag so that was stuffed in with uh, with more bags instead of the mannequin. Because I know a lot of people don't have a mannequin on hand, so I thought that would be a, a better way to do it. But it probably would have worked <laughs> if I'd measured everything better. But, um, well, after I, after the paper mache got dry, I found out I couldn't get it on my head, so <laughs> I went back to the mannequin instead. I'm going to be using clear yogurt lids for the um, for the lens on the eyes, so I used some extra yogurt lids just to help me figure out where those eyes were going to go. The nostrils that were showing on the lantern fish were really tiny, but they were in the right place, I thought, so that I would be able to see out of the mask. So if I put more sculpted and much bigger nostrils, then I would have a, a reasonable way to actually see out of the mask without just making holes in it. Now it turned out that that didn't, didn't actually work, but we'll get to the cosmetic surgery a little bit later. Now there was a lot of clay on the head and that's why uh, I really did have to prop it up with that stick. The other thing that I added, which wasn't on the fish, was a tongue, kind of like a human tongue. And I, I really didn't like it, so I removed that later, but I replaced them with little tiny teeth. I got it nice and wet and smoothed everything off. Then I put some plastic wrap over the clay. That makes it really easy to get the dry paper mache off the clay. And it also leaves the inside of the mask really clean. In the past, I've tried other ways of doing it, uh, like using wax over it or spraying the clay with a, a clear varnish, letting it dry. Um, none of those things keep it as clean as just putting the plastic wrap over it. And the plastic wrap will stick to wet clay. It will also stick to wet plastic wrap. So if you have some that is over, you know, uh, has to overlap and it just kind of tries to peel off, just spray uh, the first layer with a little bit of water and then the, the second layer will stick really well. If you're using the wet clay, you really do have to get a barrier so that the paper mache doesn't stay wet for like forever, which it would if you put it straight on the clay. Just before I started to put the paper strips and paste on there, I put circles of cardboard where the eyes are going to go. I put a few layers of paper strips and paste over the plastic. Uh, I used torn strips of newspaper and just cooked flour and water paste. I've got a, um, a link to that right down in the 
description right below the video so that you can go see the paste recipe if you want to. A lot of people ask me if you can make a mask entirely with paper mache clay and skip the, the first layer of paper strips and paste. I try to talk people out of it because paper mache clay has a slight texture in it because of the, the paper. And it dries as hard as a rock, so it's almost impossible to sand it smooth enough so that it won't feel like you're wearing a sandpaper mask. So I really think it's a lot more comfortable to have something else on the inside, like traditional paper strips and paste. Um, now, once the paper strips and, and paste were on there, I put the head in front of a fan, I let it dry overnight, and then I was able to add that just paper-thin layer of paper mache clay. Um, I, I use less flour than the paper mache clay recipe calls for so that I can get it on really, really thin. You don't have to use uh, paper mache clay if you want to make one of these. Just add a couple more layers of uh, paper strips and paste. Once the paper mache clay was on there, it went back in front of the fan and I left it there for at least another 24 hours. I wanted to make sure it was completely dry before I tried pulling this off of the clay. Of course, there was, there was plastic over the mannequin and there was plastic over the WD clay, so it was really easy to just go ahead and pull the mask and the clay off the mannequin and then I just started pulling the clay out. There was a whole lot of it, <laughs> so it took a while. And it was really clean because of that plastic on both sides of it, so I just put the clay back in the bag and I'll use it on my next project. And then I trimmed up the edges a little bit and I <laughs> tried it on. <laughs> that's, that's when it became really obvious that I was not going to be able to see out of those nostrils. I was really sad because I liked those nostrils, but well, I just didn't do it right. So I used my Dremel tool to cut off the nostrils. I, I really didn't want to do it, but I did. And then I cut big holes between the big lighted eyes. I really wanted to just, you know, make it work so that I could use the sculpted nostrils up there between the eyes, but that just really didn't work good. So it ended up just being a couple of big holes, which I'm not happy with. Um, to cover up those big holes where the nostrils used to be, I put some masking tape behind uh, on the back side of the mask and then covered it with a really thin layer of paper mache clay. I also wanted the, the um, holes where I'm going to be seeing out to have a little bit more definition um, rather than just being a cut out hole. So I put a thin foil rope on the inside of the of the, those holes. Then I, and I covered those with very small strips of paper and paste. Uh, paper mache clay does not like going around really thin areas like that. So I went ahead and used the, uh, the traditional paper mache instead. And of course then it had to go back in front of the fan again. Um, the, the amount of clay that I used in order to cover the nostrils, I, I think I got a little carried away. And so it actually took two days for it to dry this time. I painted the cardboard backing of the eyes white to reflect light from the LED lights that are going to go inside the, the eyes. Then it was time to paint the eyes. I, I got out my clear yogurt lid. I put a black circle of paper right on the center of the eye. I held it on with a smear of acrylic gel medium. When the medium for the pupils was dry, I covered the entire inside of the lenses, the you know the yogurt lids, with stuff called Dragonfly Glaze. Uh, it's made by Folk Art, and it has um, it, it says it's a color changing top coat. I've never seen the color change actually, <laughs> but it's got little tiny um, flecks of gold in it, and it really does have a, an interesting um, shininess to it. So that went on the inside, and I let that dry. And then I used some, um, just a light blue and made kind of a circular uh, design on the inside of the, the yogurt lid. I did that because when I looked at eyeballs uh, of the real lanternfish, they seem to have kind of a, a design like that on their eyes, so I, I tried to get that as close as I could. I also wanted to make sure that I didn't put so much um, blue paint on there that the light wouldn't show through. That was kind of important. And then I used the drill to cut a hole in the eye backing on both of them. While the blue paint was drying, I unwound the wires. I pulled the end of one of them up through one of the holes. 
and then I wound the wire around the outside edge of the eye area. Uh, it went around like I think three times. I, I kind of tacked them in place with little pieces of masking tape. And then I used um, just spots of hot glue to hold the, the wire in place. It, obviously you're going to want to put the hot glue on the area of the, of the wire that doesn't have those little tiny lights in it. I put the, the lights all the way around the outside edges just because I thought it would be nice um, to have the light coming in from the outside rather than having it uh, little spots of light all over the uh, inside of the eye. But, but you might actually like it that way better. So go ahead and, and try it both ways if, if you happen to want to make one of these things. I used hot glue also to attach the battery holder and the switch to the inside of the mask right between the eyes. I put the blue eyes on over the lights, making sure that all the lights were like on the inside of the yogurt lid. And I tacked them on with just hot glue just in a couple of places. And then I covered the edges with more paper mache clay. I also covered just a, a really um, narrow stripe on the, on the surface of the yogurt lid. Um, just so that I would know for sure that, you know, that the eyes weren't going to pop off because that would be weird. <laughs> now this all went back in front of the fan, of course. It took another couple of days before I could start painting it. I originally intended to paint the fish alien the same light gray as the real fish with some colored areas kind of splashed on where light comes through his skin. But I kind of changed that plan because since I was no longer looking through the, the nostrils but through those big holes between his eyes instead, I thought a darker skin might help hide those holes. I, I started out with a pre-mixed dark gray acrylic paint. But it, it has a, a kind of a weird green tone that I, I really didn't like very well. I painted the paper mache clay right around that uh, the, the thin rim of the yogurt lid. Uh, with black paint. I s still didn't like that greenish gray though, so I used some golden glazing liquid with just a little bit of burnt umber in it, and I brushed that over the gray. I bought some powdered pigments years ago. I have no idea why I did that. I can't remember, and I know that I've never used them, so I decided that I'd play around just to see what would happen if I put them on over that really dark gray. So I brushed on some soft gel medium over the sections of the face where a real lanternfish tends to have lighted skin, and I scattered some powdered green and blue pigments over it. When the gel was dry, it was pretty obvious that I was going to have to put something over the powdered uh, pigment or it was just going to keep falling off over time. So I took it downstairs to the basement and sprayed it with clear varnish. Um, I did cover the eyes with some paper to make sure that didn't get any varnish on it, but the rest of it was sprayed and that darkened the pigment so much that they almost disappeared into the dark skin. I think maybe a fixative spray that is used for, for pastel paintings Maybe that would have worked better, but I didn't have any, so so I kept going. <laughs> I went ahead and added a coat of the dragonfly glaze over the entire head to make them shiny, except for the eyes, of course. And it did kind of help bring back some of the color in the powdered pigment, but I still wasn't really excited about it. My very last thing that I did, or second to last thing, uh, is I used a, I mixed up some golden glazing liquid, some white acrylic paint, and some burnt umber and blue to make a, a really nice light blue gray, but it was very transparent. And I used a sponge to kind of put it all over the, the dark gray. I really like the color now a lot better than I did when it was just plain dark gray, but I didn't like those sponged on dabs. So after the sponged on dabs were dry, I used a, a wide brush to brush that transparent glaze over the whole head and I wiped it off with a damp cloth and that um, that really softened the the look of it um, gave him a little bit of texture but not real uh, dabby type of a texture and I at that point I actually liked it. I know this is a really weird idea but I do think that there, there's two ideas in this that are really cool and you can do a lot with them. Um, the first one of course is making a mask, an alien mask or any other kind of mask using the face of a fish and there's just some amazing 
fish out there. They're just so totally weird. A lot of them are from really deep in the ocean like this guy. That's why he has the lighted eyes. I don't know if that actually helps him see. I don't know what that's for. I, I, I really don't know what he uses his lights for, but um, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> and the other part of this that I think is really cool is the fact that you can put um, something with lights in it for not very much money. It, it wouldn't be for like a permanent installation unless you don't mind replacing the batteries, but um, but it was still pretty pretty nice for just a temporary thing. <laughs> so I know I spend an, an awful lot of time, you can tell from all the times that it had to sit and dry. This was not a fast project. It was an easy project. And if you actually knew in advance how you wanted to paint it, it would have taken a whole lot less time. <laughs> if you make anything like this or, well, okay, you probably won't be like this because this is weird, but <laughs> whatever you make, I hope you come show it off on the Daily Sculptors page on my website at ultimatepapermache.com. There's a link to that page at the top of the site. You can easily see it, and at the same time, you can come tell all of our fellow paper mache artists um, what you think of their uh, projects that they've been sharing with us. You just see some amazing work out there. So come on, visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll <laughs> see you there.